Happy Super Bowl Sunday, everybody. I'm Jason the Cartoon Fan, and I'm back with part two of my two-part video showing you all of the plush toys I currently own. I decided to upload this video at an earlier time than the time I usually upload my videos at, so you guys and gals will be able to watch it before tonight's big game. In part one, I showed you all the plushes I have of characters from shows produced by Nickelodeon and Warner Brothers. And by extension, when it comes to Warner Brothers, Hanna-Barbera, and Cartoon Network. So now, I'm going to be showing you all the plushes I have of characters from some of the other major animation companies, including Disney, 20th Century Fox, and Universal. Oh, and also my plush toys for Peanuts. Um, I brought them up separately, like I brought Peanuts up separately because it's not really owned by any one of those three sp specific companies. All right, I guess we may as well get started with my plush toys of Disney characters, including characters like the classic Disney characters, characters from the animated canon movies, um, Pixar's films, and the Disney television animation shows. Of course, you can't have a collection of Disney plushes without Mickey Mouse. So, here's Mickey right here. Um, I got him at Disneyland, and this plush is actually a limited edition released in 2015 for Disneyland's 60th anniversary, also known as their Diamond Celebration. So Mickey is wearing this really special dark blue outfit that matches the color of the, the all the other merchandise that Disney put out for the Disneyland Resort's 60th anniversary. Um... It's really well stitched together because it was made by Disney themselves. And uh, here's the tag, which lets you know that this was indeed made for Disneyland's Diamond Celebration. Um, $34.95. A bit of expensive price, but you know, it is a pretty high quality plush, so I think it was worth it. Oh, and this is also a plush of Mickey that has his tail. Mickey always had a tail, but not all of his plush toys have a tail sewn on to them. So it's good that this one has a tail. All right. The other classic Disney character I have a plush of is... <laughs> Oi, Goofy! My favorite of the classic Disney characters from the Fab Five. Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, and Goofy. Um... My friend Alexi got this for me as a Christmas gift in 2019, and he got it for me because he knew that Goofy was my favorite classic Disney character, and he's also, Alexi is a really big Disney fan as well, so it's cool that I have a plush of Goofy in my collection now. Um, I believe that this was also made by Disney themselves, oh wait, Nope, it was actually made by Toy Factory. Huh, that's interesting. I didn't know that Disney licensed the, any of their characters out to Toy Factory before coming across this plush. Um, it says that the item may not be sold at retail, so this was a prize redemption plush. Don't know if it was given away at a carnival game or if it was a claw machine plush, but either way, pretty cool. Then I have two plushes from Disney's main, like two plushes of characters from Disney's mainstream animated movies. First off, Sally from the Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, I got her at Walgreens. I would have gotten Jack since I love Jack Skellington. He's one of my all time favorite characters from one of Disney's movies. But unfortunately, the Walgreens I went to was all out of him. 
Um, I got this at around Halloween time when Disney, like when Walgreens was selling a bunch of Nightmare Before Christmas merchandise. And unfortunately, they were all out of Jack. But, you know, they still had Sally. This was the last one of her so, that they were selling. So I figured, yeah, why not purchase her? Um, yep, nothing really much else to say about this one. Uh, let's see, here's the tag. Let me try to find a manufacturer. Uh, it doesn't look like th there was a manufacturer. It looks like Disney themselves made it. But you can see that it says copyright 2020 Walgreens Co. So that means this was only made for sale at Walgreens. All right. The other character from Disney's mainstream animated movies I have a plush of is Stitch. Um, Stitch is another one of my all-time favorite Disney animated characters. So, of course, I have to have a plush of him. Uh, I got this at the Target in Anaheim, not too far away from Disneyland, because this Stitch plush was a lot less expensive than the Stitch plushes that were being sold at Disneyland when I got this specific plush. Um, I think it was in 2019, 2018 or 2019 when I got this. Um... Here's the tag. This plush was made by Just Play, the same company that made those Hey Arnold plushes I showed you in part one of this video. It, that's cool. That's cool. And um, here's the other side of the tag. Um, nothing really else to say about him. Okay. So now it's time to show you my plushes for characters from Pixar movies. Um, first, I have two Toy Story plushes. Ham and Rex. Uh, uh, I got Ham at Disneyland back in 2014. And you can see that it's from the dis like it, it was made by Disney themselves, and it carries the authentic original Disney Parks logo on the tag. Uh, yeah, pretty cool to have a plush toy of Ham, since he doesn't have like an actual toy. I mean, he's a piggy bank in the Toy Story movies, so of course they don't have like an actual toy of him. But you know, it's strange that they didn't make Ham like an actual piggy bank you could buy. Um, it seems like uh, uh, like a genius marketing decision, but no, they haven't really done that yet, oddly enough. Okay, the other Toy Story character is Rex, so let's take a look at him. Um, I used to have a plastic figure of him, but not anymore. Um, this was a gift for me from a Boys and Girls Club w back when I was going there regularly before COVID hit. So this plush was made exclusively for sale at Kohl's. And it's one of those plushes where if you buy it, they would donate part of the money you spent on it to a charity. So yeah, it's a more unique plush. That's for sure. All right, moving on to other Pixar movies I have plushes for. Um, I have Violet from The Incredibles. Violet is my favorite of the, inc my favorite member of The Incredibles of the Parr family. So it's definitely really nice to have a plush of her. Um, I got this at Disneyland back in 2018. Well, actually, to be more accurate, at California Adventure, since, you know, of course they have the Incredicoaster there now. And you can see that there's the tag letting you know that this plush was made uh, to promote Incredibles 2. Uh, there's the Disney logo on the back, so this was made by Disney themselves. Usually, Disney makes plushes of their characters themselves, but that isn't always the case. Okay. Finally, f for my plushes of Pixar characters, I have Sadness and Disgust from Inside Out. 
Inside Out was the best Pixar movie to come out in the 2010s, without a doubt. Um, it was kind of a rough decade for the studio, but with Inside Out, they began to slowly but surely step up their game again. So, um, first let me show you what Sadness looks like. Sadness is actually my favorite of the emotions because she's the funniest. Um, it, it's also somewhat of a backpack because it has a zipper that you can store stuff in. But, you know, I'm not really ever going to use that. Um, I won this at a claw machine at a, that was located at a Round Tables Pizza, of all places. Um, here is the tag, which has all of the emotions and the Disney, Pixar, and Inside Out logos. And um, there's no... Like, it doesn't mention a manufacturer, so I assume that this was made by Disney themselves. Though the tag is the same shape as the Stitch tag... Like the tag that was attached to the Stitch plush I showed earlier in this part of the video. So I might be wrong about that. And anyways, you know, good plush. Alright, so um, here's Disgust. Um, she was actually one of... the Like this plush of her was actually released as soon as the movie came out in 2015. But I managed to purchase this plush for $2.00. At the 99 cent store. So I guess they it was just a bunch of leftover stock of the Inside Out toys that the company like Disney wasn't able to sell when they first came out. So the stock just ended up going to the 99 cent store and they put it on sale for the ridiculously cheap prices. Um, it's cool. I like how her shoulders are crossed. Because, you know, that's kind of like one of the main things she does. And um, it's stitched well enough. Though you can't actually move her hands around because they're stitched together. <laughs> I keep on saying stitch when it comes to plushes of Disney characters. Even ones that aren't, well, you know, stitch. <laughs> Alright, so um, this plush was made by a company called Tommy who actually made plushes for another Pixar movie, The Good Dinosaur. Well, not just plushes. They also made, like, action figures for that movie as well. So, yep. Pretty interesting info to know. Alright, so now I'm going to show you my plushes for Disney television animation shows. First... I have Phineas and Ferb. Yeah, these are definitely really cool plushes to have in my collection. Since longtime subscribers to this channel will know how much I freaking love Phineas and Ferb. So, being able to have plushes of the iconic step duo of stepbrothers is definitely really, really nice. Um, there aren't any tags on these. So I don't know exactly who made them, but I do believe that they were made by Disney themselves because I've seen these plushes before on sale at Disneyland back when the show was still producing new episodes. So, yep, definitely really cool plushes to have in my collection. There's Phineas. You know... Phineas, uh, people on the internet have joked around that you should never press pause when Phineas is turning his head around because he looks kind of a bit creepy when he's facing forward like this. But, you know, he doesn't look that bad in that specific angle with the when it comes to this plush. Um, and then here is a Ferb in greater detail. Um, I got both of these plushes at a toy convention back in 2018. Um, whoever owned these last told me that he was a really huge Phineas and Ferb fan. so Probably just as big of a fan of the show as I am. So he was a little bit sad that he had to get rid of these plushes. 
but he was happy that they were going to a good place. Oh, um, I have two other plushes of Phineas and Ferb characters, but I didn't put them with the other ones because I wanted to keep them a secret. I'll give you a clue as to which character the plushes are of before I actually show them. Dooby dooby doo ba dooby dooby doo ba dooby dooby doo ba. Bam! A platypus? Bam! Perry the platypus! That's right, I have two Perry the platypus plushes. One of him in his normal, like his, like when he's just a domestic animal walking around Phineas and Ferb's house. And the other one of him as Agent P. So, uh, yeah, these are both really cool. Um, I got both of these with the Phineas and Ferb plushes at that toy convention I was I brought up earlier. So, yep, definitely really cool plushes to have in my collection. Because, you know, I love Phineas and Ferb. And look, there's this cute little tail sewn onto there. That's, that's nice. All right. Moving on to some more recent Disney television animation shows with these next two plushes I have. First, Mabel Pines from Gravity Falls. Um, I got this as a Christmas gift back in 2016 when I first started getting into Gravity Falls. Um, it's it's sewn really, it's nicely stitched together. And there's Mabel's cute little face sewn onto there. She looks nice. And there's her rainbow sweater. Um, so th this is the tag that was attached to it. Um, this plush was made by a company called Jazzwares. They've made toys for other licensed properties over the years, most notably Sonic the Hedgehog. But in the mid 2010s, they had a contract with Disney to make toys for Gravity Falls. Um, besides Mabel, they, uh, Jazzwares also made plushes of the Barfing Gnome and Waddles. You may be wondering, where's Dipper? I mean, I know that Dipper isn't uh, even nearly as cute of a character as Mabel, but, you know, it still would have been nice to have a plush of him to go alongside her because, you know, they're, they're twins. Well, Jazzwares was going to release a plush of Dipper, but they canceled it for some weird reason. Still would have been really cool if they made him, though, since, you know, they would have had them paired up together, just like how I have Phineas and Fur paired up together when it comes to my plush collection. Uh, you know, beggars can't be choosers. They, they really can't. All right, so... The next plush I'm going to show you is probably my favorite one in my entire collection. And it's one that I don't think many people have. Da, 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 da. The Magical Princess from Another Dimension, Star Butterfly from Star vs. the Forces of Evil. So, this is a really, really nice plush. It's sewn together pretty nicely. There's a star's a sweet little face sewn onto there with the hearts on her cheeks. And then there's her little devil headband right up there. And then right over the, below her face is her normal dress with the little ghost pictured on it that she usually wears. Like the star has like five different outfits. And this is the one, like this is her default one. Um... So, as you can tell from the sticker that was placed on the tag, the plush was released as an exclusive for San Diego Comic-Con 2018. Um, kind of like the Lapis Lazuli plush that I showed you all in part one of this video, but the year after that plush was made. So, this plush was made by a company called Fat Mojo, and... They also made a star plush that they released in retail outlets, but it isn't as well made as the original version. So I'm definitely happy to have this one in my collection. Um, apparently, 
only 5,000 copies of this plush, like the original version of it, were ever made. So it's definitely probably the rarest plush I have in my collection. Um, I got it at Stockton Con in the in 2018, and it was $80 to purchase for like it it cost me $80 to buy this used well technically it was new because you know it still looks new it was just it just had a different owner previously but i think it was worth that because you know star versus the forces of evil was one of my all-time favorite disney tv shows um final the terrible final season aside and um yeah, I used to be super obsessed with this show a couple of years ago, and I wanted to buy all the merchandise of it I could possibly have. So I have quite a few pieces of merchandise for Star vs. the Forces of Evil in my collection, including the Star and Marco's Guide to Mastering Every Dimension book, um, almost the entire set of the show's Funko Pops, and of course, the Star Butterfly plush. All right. So, Star is the last Disney character I have plushes of, so, like I have a plush of. So now it's time for me to move right along to my plushes of characters from 20th Century Fox. Um, I have this, at, I like I have them right after my Disney ones and before my Universal ones as a transition of sorts. Because, you know, Disney owns 20th Century Fox, but I kind of want to still treat them as a separate studio, even though Disney is making it increasingly harder for us to be able to do that. So I have five Simpsons plushes and one other plush of a Fox character. Um, I'll show you that one right after I show the Simpsons ones here. Um, I'm going to move Star a little bit so she looks... So she's placed on there a little bit better. All right. So the first of the Simpsons plushes I'm going to show you is this really cool one of Homer Simpson where it he has a plastic head, but it's a plush body. So this plush was made for sale at Burger King all the way back in 1990 when Fox first started chugging out tons of Simpsons merchandise. All five members of the Simpson family got one of these plushes, but I only have Homer so far because they're um, kind of a bit hard to find. Um, there, see, there's a 1990 copyright date on the tag. Um, there is no mention of Burger King anywhere on this tag, but I looked this plush up online and yes, this plush was made for sale at Burger King. No, you had to buy them separately. They didn't include them in their kids' meals or anything like that. Even though Burger King has had quite a few Simpsons toys placed inside their kids' meals over the years. So yeah, this is a, a not too common plush to have in my collection. It isn't as rare as the Star Butterfly one as far as I know. But, you know, it's more of an uncommon one. It's the oldest plush in my collection. The second oldest being the Fred Flintstone one. As, like I mentioned in part one, all of my other plushes were made in the 2000s and later. Alright, you can't have a toy of Homer without a toy of Marge. So, I have her. Um, my dad won this for me at one of the carnival games that they had near the Simpsons ride at Universal Studios Hollywood. Uh, this is a nice little plush. It's stitched really well. Um, this was actually made for sale at Universal Studios' theme parks back when the Simpsons, like all the way back when the Simpsons ride was first open. But I guess this plush wasn't selling well enough for them to continue putting it in retail. So I guess they figured, eh, why not give this out as a prize redemption toy? Um, yeah, nothing really else much to say about this one, but it looks, it looks good. It looks fine. Okay, next off I have two Bart plushes. 
this one right here, and then this one over here. Um, this bar plush, I won myself at one of the carnival games at Universal Studios. Um, but this one isn't even nearly as good, uh, like, it's not even nearly as high quality of a plush as the Marge one, because back when I won this, it was in 2014, no, 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 wait, it was actually 2015, and, um, they were still selling that Marge plush exclusively for sale at the Universal Studios theme parks' gift shops, so this was actually a cheap prize redemption plush, and it was actually made by Toy Factory. Man, they just keep on coming back for multiple parts of this video, aren't they? Uh, um, let me try to find the manufacturing date on here because most of Toy Factory's plushes have a manufacturing date. Um, says that it was manufactured in January 2014. So, yeah. I'm assuming that this was made to promote the show's 20, like, in honor of the show's 25th anniversary, because there were a lot of Simpsons toys that were made in 2014 to celebrate that anniversary, because it was a really big one, since, you know, most TV shows don't go on for as ridiculously long as The Simpsons has. All right. So this Bart plush right here is of a much higher quality, and that's because I got it as a birthday gift from my mom in 2014. Um, this plush was made by a company called Commonwealth, who has made quite a few plushes of both The Simpsons and Family Guy since they got the license back in 2010. So... You can see right here on this tag that the plush was made sp specifically for the show's 25th anniversary, which is cool. I have a few other pieces of Simpsons merchandise that were made for that anniversary. And um, here is the other tag, and it's you can't really see right here, but it does say in the fine print that this plush was made by Commonwealth. And there was another tag that was attached to the plush, but I wasn't able, like, it was loosely attached on there, so unfortunately it came off. But I decided to hold on to it because, well, you know who I, how I am. And there's Commonwealth's logo right over there. So, yeah. This was actually made in 2013, even though The Simpsons' 25th anniversary was in 2014. I guess they wanted to get a head start on that celebration. All right, last but not least for my 20th Century Fox plushes, the only Family Guy plush I currently have. This one is of Brian Griffin. Um, just like with The Simpsons, Commonwealth has made quite a few Family Guy plushes over the years, but this one is unique because it's one of those plushes where if you press a button, um, there's a, a, a it activates a battery-powered thing that allows you to, like, it creates, like, it has a special gimmick inside with a special battery. So the gimmick for this one is if you press Brian's paw right here, it has three different phrases that play. Oh, yeah. What better way to relax and snuggle than having a plush that will haunt your dreams forever with Seth MacFarlane's voice? <laughs> Get it? Because, you know, Seth uses his normal voice when it when he plays Brian. Um, here's the tag that's attached to it, along with this one right here that warns you that because this is a plush of an adult cartoon show, it's not appropriate for children under the age of 12. Yeah, it says 12, even though Family Guy is actually rated TV-14 on Fox. Um, here is the other tag. I, as you can tell from the sticker, I got it for $11.95. And I got it at a store called Toy Safari, located in Alameda, which is like an all-encompassing store for all different kinds of really cool toys. So I'm definitely happy to have this in my collection. Commonwealth also made a talking plush toy of Stewie, and I've seen him before. I just haven't gotten around to purchasing him yet. 
there is a 2012 copyright date on this tag. So that I'm assuming that this was when the plush was made. All right. Oh, wait, there was one other plush I forgot to show you for um, Fox Properties. Um, this one also needs a special introduction. Hello, Bart. Ah! you, Bob! That's right. I have an official plush toy of Sideshow Bob. Man, talk about a niche demographic here. I mean, I know that Sideshow Bob is Bart's main enemy, but come on. I mean, uh, wh who, like, wh what is the market for this specific plush besides diehard Simpsons fans like myself? But I can't complain because, well, it doesn't look that bad. Um, you can see that there's a little hole in there. So this was obviously, you could tell that this was cheaply designed. It almost kind of looks like that cheap Bart plush I told I showed you that I wanted Universal Studios, but it wasn't made by Toy Factory. Uh, here's, it says that it has a 2006 copyright date. Um, before Toy Factory and Commonwealth got the license to make Simpsons plushes, another m plush toy company called Nanco May, it got the license to make Simpsons plushes back in the early to mid 2000s. Um, yeah, this one is pretty cheaply designed, but you know, it's pretty uncommon because you know, it's a plush of Sideshow Bob for goodness sake. Um, uh, my cousin Josh won this for me at a Fuddruckers of all places. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's definitely really cool to have in my collection because, you know, there aren't that many pieces of merchandise of Sideshow Bob. All right, now we're getting into my plushes of Universal characters. All right, um, just like how you can't have a collection of Disney plush toys without Mickey or a collection of Warner Brothers plush toys without Looney Tunes characters, um, if you want me to go to the alternative company route, you can't have a series of plush, like a collection of plushes for Universal without having a plush of Woody Woodpecker. So here he is. Um, I won this at the same Circus Circus that I got the Powerpuff Girls and Loud House plushes I showed you in part one at. And um, here's the tag. It's another Toy Factory plush. Um, it's a newer plush because you can see that it has the modern day Universal logo on it. And uh, let me try to find the manufacturing date on here. Huh, the tag says Chili Willy for some odd reason. Well, were they so, la so lazy that they didn't redo the tags? to mention the other main universal character created by Walter Lance. Um, anyways, um, it says here that this plush was made in November 2019. So it's a, yeah, it's a newer plush. And I won this at a claw machine located in that circus circus that just had this one plush. Like there were multiple copies of just this one plush that you could win. So, <laughs> I guess they rigged it. <laughs> All right, so now it's time for me to show you my plushes of Illumination characters. Um, uh, this is a Thai Beanie Baby of Ash from Sing. Um, I know it kind of has a mixed reception among long, like most animation fans, but I do think that Sing is, is, Sing is a good movie. Um, Ash was my favorite character in it, so I had to have a plush of her, and so I do. So, yep, there's the heart-shaped tie tag that, that, can, that can be found on pretty much all of their plushes. Alright, then I have a few plushes for the Secret Life of Pets. Uh, these five plushes right here are were released exclusively at McDonald's. They put them inside their Happy Meals. Um, we have Max. 
Um, here is the tag that's attached to it. See, right there, it says manufactured for McDonald's. Gidget. She's my favorite character in this movie because she's voiced by Jenny Slate, one of my favorite live action actresses, even though she voices Ponyhead from Star vs. the Forces of Evil. I don't think that Ponyhead deserves the hate that she's gotten, but I do agree that she's not one of the absolute best characters on Star vs. the Forces of Evil, to say the least. Uh, let's see here. This is um, Mel. All of these plushes have a 2015 copyright date on them because they were made specifically to promote the movie when it first came out. Um, here is Chloe. And finally, for the McDonald's Happy Meals Secret Life of Pets plushes I have, um, we have Snowball. All right, and then I have one other Secret Life of Pets plush, a regular-sized plush of Gidget. Um, this is another Toy Factory plush because Toy Factory has made plushes for quite a few Universal properties over the years. Um, let me try to find a manufacturing date on here. I won this plush at a claw machine located in my local mall, uh, the West Valley Mall. Uh, it says here that this plush was manufactured in March 2016. Um, a few months after the movie was released. But, you know, plush of this movie is a plush of this movie. Especially when it comes to plushes of my favorite character from the movie. Alright, last but not least for my Universal plushes. I have three different plushes of E.T. I know E.T. isn't a cartoon character, but he is an animatronics. And in my opinion, it's close enough. So let me show you all of the three E.T. plushes I have. Um, my Aunt Jennifer gave these to me. She used to be like a really big E.T. fanatic, but then she eventually grew out of it and gave me all three of these plushes. Um, E.T. is one of my all-time favorite live-action movies. I even have it on DVD. So it's definitely really cool that I have these three plushes of that cute little extraterrestrial. All right, let me show you this big one first. He's wearing a jacket with the movie's logo printed on it. Well, actually, it's not printed. It's actually sewn on there. And um, you can see right here that this plush was made exclusively for sale at the Universal Studios theme parks. And Jennifer told me that she got these, like she got this plush back when Universal Studios Hollywood still had E.T. the ride. Now it's only at Universal Studios in Florida. I re I've always wanted to go to Universal Studios in Florida just because to ride that ride as well as all the other rides that are in that version of the park that you can't go to at Universal Studios in Hollywood. All right, and then these two smaller E.T. plushes are a little bit more cheaply designed, but they're not bad looking. Because the main problem I have with them is that they're, well, this one's hands can move. Oh, 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 for a second there, I thought that the hands were stitched into them so you can't move them, but apparently you can move them. All right, let's take a look at them. So this is a much older plush I can tell because it has the older Universal Studios theme park logo. 
There is no copyright date on these, but I'm assuming that it was made that these were made sometime in the 1990s when the ET ride was first new. Um so here is the other ET plush. Pretty much the same info on its tag. All right, last but not least for my plush toy collection, I have three plush toys of the Peanuts franchise. So let me show you all three of them. All right, first, of course, I have Charlie Brown. Um, I purchased him at California's Great Adventure where of course they have Planet Snoopy. And uh, here is the tag. And there's another tag that says Cedar Fair because Cedar Fair is the company that owns um, California's Great of, uh, America. Uh, it says, yep, designed and manufactured exclusively for Cedar Fair theme parks. So they sold these and not just California's Great Adventure, but also other theme parks that Cedar Fair owns that have the um, Peanuts themed attractions, like Knott's Berry Farm, which has um, Camp Snoopy. Um, so yeah, pretty stitched. It's well, it's sewn together really well, but that's all I can say about it. All right, and then I have this electronic plush of Snoopy. This one doesn't talk. Well, obviously it doesn't because Snoopy doesn't actually speak. But it does have another cool battery-powered function. It's a Christmas-themed Snoopy plush, which explains why it has the iconic Charlie Brown Christmas tree sewn onto there. And when you press this button here, um, the tree lights up and part of the iconic Linus and Lucy theme plays. Sure hope this doesn't get a copyright claim. So, uh, yeah. All right. Finally, for my complete collection of plush toys, this Peanuts plush right here of Peppermint Patty. I actually got this plush before I got Charlie Brown because it was recommended to me since, you know, everybody buys the plushes of Charlie Brown and Snoopy. Not so, the other, so much the other members of the Peanuts gang. So I figured, you know... It's cool, like, you know, it, it, I'll get Charlie Brown and Snoopy eventually, and I did, but it would, all, it would be cool to have some plushes of the other members of the Peanuts gang just for the heck of it, because, you know, they aren't as common. So, the same tags on this plush are, like, like they, this plush has the same tags as the Charlie Brown plush, because I also got this plush at California's Great America. All right. So, yep. Really nice, nicely made plush. That's all I can say about him. So, yep. That's all. That's my complete collection of plush toys. If you enjoyed this video as well as part one, please be sure to give both parts of this video a thumbs up. And make sure to comment on either part to let me know which plush I have in my collection is your favorite. And if you're new to this channel and haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my exciting upcoming videos. Until next time, this is Jason the Cartoon Fan reminding you to stay cute and cuddly, boys. Cute and cuddly.